Chapter 18 Rotational and Vibrational Transitions of Molecules Section 18.3 Infrared Spectra of Rigid Rotors and Harmonic Oscillators When the atomic molecule such as HCl absorbs a photon, the molecule undergoes the rotational transition and the vibrational transition simultaneously. For the rotational transition, delta J must be plus minus 1. For the vibrational transition, delta N must be plus 1. J has to change due to the angular momentum of the photon. N has to change because of the oscillating electric field of the photon. At room temperature or similar temperatures, very few molecules occupy the excited vibrational energy levels. For example, about 99.9999% of HCl molecules occupy the lowest possible vibrational energy level. Therefore, only the 0 to 1 vibrational transition is observed for most molecules at typical temperatures in a typical rotational vibrational spectrum. The 0 to 1 vibrational transition is always coupled with the delta J equals plus minus 1 rotational transitions. Now let's assume hydrogen chloride is a rigid rotor and harmonic oscillator for simplicity. Its 0 to 1 vibrational transition wave number is 2,884 wave numbers or 2,884 waves per centimeter. Its rotational constant B is 10.59 per centimeter or 10.59 wave numbers. In the infrared spectrum of HCl, the observed wave numbers are omega plus minus 2 times j plus 1 times b, where j can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Therefore, the infrared peaks of HCl are at omega plus minus 2b, omega plus minus 4b, plus minus 6b, plus minus ab, etc. Since 2b is roughly 21 wave numbers, the numerical values of this infrared wave numbers should be over here the pure vibrational transition 2884 plus minus 21 plus minus 42 plus minus 63 etc. The spacings between the neighboring infrared peaks are 2b which is approximately 21 wave numbers or 21 per centimeter except between the central two peaks at omega plus 2b and omega minus 2b. So there's a gap between these two. The gap is 4b, 42 centimeters. Uh, this is because, well, no peak is observed right at this pure vibrational transition. Pure vibrational transition means delta J equals zero. And delta J equals zero is forbidden. As we know, the selection rule of rotational transition is delta J equals plus minus one. Again, a photon has a angular momentum of plus H bar or negative H bar. When the molecule absorbs a photon, its angular momentum has to change. That's why the value of J must change as well. We cannot have delta J equals zero. The vibrational transition of a diatomic molecule is always accompanied by a rotational transition with delta J being plus or minus one. Now let's look at this diagram. So when we, when we observe the vibrational transition uh, from level 0 to level 1. This transition may be accompanied by rotational excitation, the R branch, or rotational de-excitation, the P branch. 
Now let's look at the R branch here. Uh, J can go from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 5. Delta J is plus 1. Now in the P branch, J can go from 1 to 0, 2 to 1, 3 to 2, 4 to 3, and then 5 to 4. So both R branch and P branch can be observed in a high resolution infrared spectrum. Now let's look at the Q branch in the middle. The Q branch also has a vibrational transition from n equals 0 to n equals 1. But now let's look at the change of J. From 0 to 0, no change. 1 to 1, no change. 2 to 2. 3 to 3, 4 to 4, and 5 to 5. So Q branch is never observed in the experimental infrared spectrum of a diatomic molecule, only because delta J equals 0 is strictly forbidden in a photon-induced rotational transition. The R branch arrows are longer than the J branch arrows only because in the R branch not only we have vibrational excitation, we also have rotational excitation. So we need more energy. Here in the P branch, we do have vibrational excitation, but at the same time, we have rotational de-excitation. So less energy is required for the transitions in the P branch. The P branch arrows are simply shorter than the R branch arrows. Now let's look at the simulated high resolution infrared of carbon monoxide. Let's use P branch to the left of the gap and R branch to the right of the gap. Again, because P branch involves the rotational de-excitation, we need less energy here. R branch involves the rotational excitation. That means we have more energy here. More energy, more wave numbers. Less energy, uh, less wave numbers. In the middle, we have a wider gap of 4 times B. Between any two adjacent R branch peaks, the gap is 2B. Same between two adjacent P branches. And it's also 2B, 2B, 2B between these two. Just in the middle, we have a wider gap of 4B. By looking at this infrared spectrum of carbon monoxide, we can somehow measure the gap between two adjacent P branch peaks or two adjacent R branch peaks. And that's going to be 2B. After our measurement, you know, just you can actually measure, you know, maybe 10 gaps together. It's roughly uh, 38. And then, therefore, each gap 2B is about 3.8. So you can go from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So roughly. 38 wave numbers, and then 2B is roughly 3.8 wave numbers, and then B is 1.9 wave numbers or 1.9 waves per centimeter. Now, given the value of B, we can determine the bond distance in carbon monoxide because B equals h bar squared over 2 HCI. This is the definition of B. Remember, we define HCB to be h bar squared over 2i. So B is this. And this can be expressed as h over 8 pi squared ci. Therefore, i is h over 8 pi squared cb. And we plug in the value of B. We get the value of i, the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia is mu r squared, so we need to compute mu. Mu is 12 times 16 over 
12 plus 16 AMU. It's about 7 AMU or 1.1 times 10 to the power of negative 26 kilograms. And then given I, given mu, we have the equilibrium bond distance, the square root of moment of inertia on top, the reduced mass on the bottom, we get 1.14 angstroms. The experimental value is 1.13 angstroms. So the theory prediction is fairly accurate. The simulated infrared spectrum of carbon monoxide shows the P branch with lower wave numbers and the R branch with higher wave numbers. The pure vibrational wave number is right at the center between the P branch and the R branch. That's about 2140 wave numbers or 2000 140 waves per centimeter. The rotational constant B is roughly 1.9 wave numbers. To estimate the J value at which the intensity of the rotational transitions reach the maximum, we need to find the maximum occupation number. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the first derivative of the relative occupation number. We set it to zero to maximize the relative occupation number. So solving this uh, equation, we get uh, 2j plus 1 squared equals 2kBT over HCBE. At room temperature, we plug in the 298k here, kb is 1.38 times 10 to the power of negative 23 joule per kelvin. We plug in the value of the Planck constant, the speed of light, and b sub e, the rotational constant, uh, when this uh, bond distance is e at equilibrium bond distance. All this we get 218, and then j is 6.9 or approximately 7 because the rotational quantum number must be an integer so we're gonna say roughly 7 when j is 7 the occupation number reaches the maximum at room temperature so if we're taking the spectrum at room temperature we expect to see the occupation number reaches maximum when the rotational quantum number is 7 and we expect to see more transitions from 7 to 8 and from 7 to 6 because we have uh, more molecules in this uh, rotational quantum number 7 and those transitions are the most intense transitions. Now let's look at the spectrum and indeed uh, we have uh, the maximum intensity that corresponds to the 7 to 6 rotational de excitation. And also over here, it's maxed at from 7 to 8. The starting point is uh, j equals 7, only because we have more carbon monoxide molecules in this energy level, in this rotational energy level of J equals 7 than any other rotational energy levels.